welcome to the Yarn Waffle podcast. My name is Liz Ward. I am a crochet designer living in York in the UK um, with my Bengal cats. Um, they are all in the room with me. I think you can just see a tail there. That's a little Jack's tail. Um, he's getting so big. Uh, yeah, this is my podcast where I share what I have been making and creating over the past couple of weeks. Um, thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here, feel free to stick around. And if you are an old hand, welcome back. It is always good to see you again. And thank you so much for all the comments. It is usually quite chaotic here. I've tried to set the camera up so it won't wobble as much, but if a cat attacks it, there is nothing I can do. And at the moment, Jax is underneath it. I just put his scratching post back up here and hopefully that'll distract him slightly but yeah all the cats are in here I think Cal has left in disgust but um they are all in here with me Puka is just in the window you can't see her just at the moment she'll make an appearance at some point and Jax is everywhere aren't you darling you're eating my FOs are you eating my FOs can I just show you Jax's nose look at this nose He's got a little rubby spot on it. It's just perfect for rubbing. It's like his brown has rubbed off on his, the end of his nose. If it's possible that I have rubbed it off with little rubbies, I might well have done. Are you coming to say hi too, Puka? Come on. Oh, hello. You sit there for a minute, darling. Chaos. Chaos, chaos. Yeah, sorry it's been a while since my last podcast. Um, it's been very warm in the UK, so I've got hair. Um, and I didn't particularly want to sit up here talking about hits. And also I did have a week where we had a poorly puka. She had a sickness bug, which uh, wasn't very nice. And um, yeah, she was not happy. Not a happy cat for about a week, but um, she's much better now. Absolutely much better. Um, yeah, you wouldn't know there was anything had been wrong with her now she's back to back to fine fettle um but yeah yeah it was a stressful week so not a week i was gonna share and do a podcast so yeah it's been a couple of weeks but it's now the 2nd of august and i'm back and um the camera is wobbling because um jacks is playing with it jacks come here darling I get you. I had picked this moment to do a podcast because the cats were all calm. Of course, the minute I start talking, um, the calm goes away. And also, I'm expecting a delivery at any moment, so if I have to dash off, that is what is happening. I am going to dive in with the finished objects, otherwise we are going to be here all day. Uh, yes, darling. Yes, darling. What have you found? <laughs> Okay, Jax is going to destroy my wall art, um, and we'll just we'll just let him do what he wants. I'm not 100% sure putting the scratching post up here was a good idea, but anyway, anyway, yeah, I've got lots to show share with you um, today. The so I'm just going to crack on with finished objects. There's a few to get through and a few works in progress. I've got a few new cast-ons. Um, I have finished the vintage sweater I was making for a. Um, friend at work and I will put a picture of it on the screen just so you can see that it is finished. I'm not really going to talk about it now, I'm going to wait until I have photos of Andrea wearing it when she, you know, she's got it on with her full outfit. It does fit, I managed to do the steaks and everything but yeah I'll talk about it in more detail probably when I've got less finished objects to show and I do have those nice pictures. I did take some video footage but we'll save that for another time. Because yeah we've got a lot to get through. We have I mean, I will start with the big finished objects first. Oh, they've all gone all over the floor. Because I think I'm going to need this to protect my knee from little kitten claws, so I'm going to do this first. Because this is my mitered square blanket. For uh, regular viewers of the podcast that might know that I do um, every morning I knit one square on my mitered square blanket and this is now the second one I've finished from I think it's 
about two years of knitting at least one square a day. Sometimes I knit more than two squares, sometimes it's literally all I want to knit on so I knit like three or four squares that day and some days I literally just struggle to get that one square finished but I always get that one square finished. In the nearly two years I've only missed one day of knitting a square. Um, and it's become a habit, part of my routine. I don't know what I'd do if I didn't knit a square in the morning. And when I was knitting the border for this, I had two weeks, two weeks of knitting the border. Sorry about the wobble, it's Jack's. Um, yeah, two weeks of knitting the border. And I was just doing that in my morning knitting time rather than doing my square. I was so grumpy because I wasn't doing my square. And I was just doing the I-cord border and it was two weeks. But yeah, so I have finished my second blanket and I have cast on a third I'm back to doing a square a day but yeah I'm gonna show you as best I can here but um afterwards I'll put some pictures of it on my bed on the screen so you get a better idea um so a mitre square blanket you start with one square and then you are picking up stitches from that so there is no seaming when you finished it just grows and grows and grows this is half the width so I think technically it's about um, double bed size. So 200 centimeters by 220 centimeters or um, six foot by six foot. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's, it is slightly longer than it is wide. I'm just gonna disappear behind it and you can just look. Um, Mine was knit on a 2.5 millimeter needle. I used a short circular needle, I think it was an Addy needle, and I had 23 stitches on each side of the square, so 46 in total when I'm picking up for um, a, each square. I do have a video on my Instagram stories um, of how I pick up but I am going to do a proper tutorial but I have been saying that for a long time so who knows when it's going to happen and I did an I-cord edging and um, this time I did an applied I-cord edging so let me show you a corner oh gosh it's all over the place yeah so this is an applied I-cord edging so I picked up stitches and knit it as I went along and I used a self-striping yarn so it does change colour as it goes round and yeah it, it took absolutely forever absolutely forever but it got done eventually and that's it to the second corner and I think it's worth it it really does finish it off absolutely beautifully and this one I just used completely random colours. There are sort of areas where, well lots of areas where I've put orange and green together because I really like orange and green and there are areas where I was obviously in the mood for certain colours so I've put more neons together and things like that but um, there are really bright areas. There is my advent calendar from Ducky Darlings is in here somewhere. I think that's mainly here. There's two rows that are my advent calendar. But yeah, this was this one took about a year to make. My first one was a lot quicker because that was during the first um, lockdown and I was knitting more squares. This one, especially for the past um, six months or so I have literally just been knitting one square a day so it's been growing a lot slower um, but it's all um, indie dyed yarn oh excuse me it's all indie dyed yarn and um, there are a few repeats of colours but mainly they are all individual colourways and I have to say I absolutely love it and yeah so I have cast on another I'll show you that in whips but for now this is going to go on my knee and um, protect me from little kitten claws because Jax does have a way of sort of leaping up with claws out to um yes to get on knees right so yeah that's um 
my Mighty Square blanket. I will just put a couple of pictures on the screen so you can see it in all its glory. It is absolutely beautiful. I really do love it. Um, yeah, it's one of those projects where it's definitely going to take a long time. But if you are working on it every day and making slow, steady progress, you, you do get there. You get there quicker than you think. I mean, like I said, this is the second I've made in less than two years. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, I'm about to be attacked by a kitten. Stop squiggling away! You squiggler. Right, sit there. And listen. Okay, so, uh, oh dear, I think that was the uh, podcast board. Right, so what next, what next, what next? I I don't know if I've shown you these on the podcast. Um, I will have cast them on in on the 1st of July, as these are my Rainbow Chronicle socks for July. And these are the Will-O-The-Wisp pattern. Um, I'll put all the details for the pattern on the screen because I can't quite remember off the top of my head who it's by. It is a free pattern um, that is available on Ravelry and it is just this lovely um, lace pattern that goes down the front. The back is completely plain. And I am knitting, I knit these for the Rainbow Sock Chronicles which is a knit along hosted by um, Jules of So Sweet Violet and um, Kelly of Lay Family Alarm, yeah, I think it is. And that is to knit a pair of socks every month in a certain colourway. And I think you get extra entries if you use, use Jules's patterns. I have used one of Jules's patterns in the past. And you get extra entries if you use Kelly's yarn. I haven't used Kelly's yarn for any of these. Um, and I don't actually think I will be doing. Um, but yeah, this actually, this yarn is one I dyed myself. It's um, the it's going in the blue category. It is very much a sort of dark indigo. Why can't I say the word blue? It's it's a yeah, it's it's a lovely dark blue. And it was um, dyed on a yak sock base. So these are really lovely. And I knit them on a two millimeter needle. Um, and I think I added in the heel flap and gusset and I don't necessarily think that's in the pattern but I might be lying about that. Um, I know that I have, wherever the pattern has had a short row heel of any kind, I've been changing it to a heel flap and gusset just because that is what I'm doing for the whole collection. So that's what I'm going to continue doing for now. Um, but yeah, so, that, so these are the Will o' the Wisp socks and I, I'm really pleased with them. The first sock was knit the first week in July and then the last, the second sock was finished the last week in July. That seems to just be my way with the Rainbow Chronicle socks, that's how it's working out. Um, there seems to be a two week gap in the middle of the month where I'm just not working on them. But I've also found that because I am knitting these, I'm knitting less socks than I used to. I feel like I used to knit a lot more socks but because I have this sort of self-imposed in a way obligation to knit these I am knitting less so I'm gonna try and cast some more socks on or at least there's some lingering whips that need to um, be worked on. That said these technically are socks and they are knit in hand spun yarn because I'm a spinner now. Um, isn't this pretty? Um, I'll put these on the sock blockers. This is a sort of variation of the Rose City roller pattern by Mary Catherine Briner. Um, I will put again details on the screen. Any details for any patterns, if they are not on the screen, they will always be in the description box below, as with any details of, you know, how to contact me, where my Instagram is, blah, blah, you know, all that stuff. Because I'm terrible at remembering to put it on the screen. Yeah, so these are shorty socks. 
but they are the yarn that is a hand spun and it is not really a fingering weight if anything it's probably I mean you could argue that it's a DK weight it's probably a heavy sport and I think I knit them on 2.7 mi millimeter needles so they're quite a tight gauge and my idea was to knit them so they are more like slipper socks sort of wearing around the house slippers or you know when you have to potter out into the garden it doesn't matter because they are quite dense and that so that is also why I went for a garter heel this is a sort of variation of like a short row heel but all worked in garter rather than stocking stitch and what that does is it makes it more stretchy and it also makes it more durable so these actually fit really well um, and I've been waiting to show them on the podcast app so I can actually wear them because I really do want to wear them um, around the house and yeah the fibre for these was from eBay it was just a random one I found on eBay and um, I spun it as fine as I possibly could so if you can hear the magpie outside um, and then I chain plied it, plied it so that it would stripe which it has done it's got these little, little really lovely little stripes on it I really like these I'm just kind of slightly obsessed with knitting with hand spun at the moment I think it comes hand in hand with um, spinning all I want to do is do spinning but yeah um, knitting with hand spun is pretty pretty amazing okay so one more finished object to show today I think Can you hear my magpie? I'm putting these on the wrong hands. So I finished the spring bound bits. No, no, that's not the right words. I finished the spring bound mitts. Right, you try saying that three times fast. Spring bound mitts by Erica Luda. And these are a colour work mitt pattern. And it is this lovely little bird on a branch. I've used um, hand dyed yarns for this so you get a variegated finish so it's not quite as clean colour work as it would be if you used a solid but I really like the um, the finish yeah and the, the birds sort of mirror each other and that's the cuffs aren't they lovely yeah so the yarns I used on these are, this one is a Malabrigo yarn and I'm not sure of the colourway but it's lots of blues and purples um, this peachy colour here is the Fibre Spates Vivacious in the Bellini colourway and then the pale colour is a Ducky Darlings yarn in, um, I don't know the colourway it was one of her mystery yarns from 2019? Oh, my camera battery is going already, so I'm going to have to plug it in. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with these. Hang, hang fire one second while I try and plug my camera in. Okay, so yeah, I'm back with the spring bound mitts. And um, I, these were knit to pattern. The only thing I did slightly differently is that I used uh, the ladder back jacquard technique when working the floats on the bird so on the um, on this side I used stran standard stranded colour work because my floats weren't very far apart and then on the side with the bird there are some areas where it's got quite long floats you can see here and here so I set it up to use the ladder back jacquard technique which is a completely new to me technique um, I tried it on one other thing before trying it on these mitts um, and I, I really love it I'm a complete convert to it and what it is is you are doing a sort of a reverse stitch that carries your floats up so when you start working this you cast on the amount of stitches you need and then you 
you get to the point where you're going to do the colour work and you're going to start putting these stitches in on the back can you see there's like knit stitches that run up um you're going to add in another stitch for those and on this i did every five stitches you don't have to do it every five stitches and you do not have to um carry it up like i have done here i've carried it all the way up just to try that method you can just put in one of these stitches when you get to a long float but then on the next row if you don't have that long float you're knitting over it i just found it was easy to put it in as something that you were doing and then you don't have to think about it it's once you get used to it being there it's really easy so yeah i've cast on another couple of color work patterns using this method because i don't know i was never 100 percent happy with my color work because of long floats and the fact that they would either show through or i wouldn't catch them in in the right places so I, my fabric would end up pulling together in places that i wasn't happy about so just for me this technique is working absolutely brilliantly and i i will i think i will do a tutorial about it what i really want to do is to write a free pattern um and i want to use the the cat's markings and make some sort of like leopard print design because i think that would actually work pretty well and have long floats so it would be a nice thing to show off how to do it so that is on that's actually in the plan to do this month but yeah so i'll be talking about that technique more because i have another project on the go which uses it that i'll be showing you today there is another one i won't be showing you today but we'll get to that I seem to be catless okay so that's all i'm going to show you for finished objects this week there is some finished spinning but i'll show you that later on um, and then people who are interested in spinning can skip it. I thought I'd bring Cal in. I think um, Jax and Puka have gone downstairs. It's very quiet. It's always worrying when it's quiet and I don't know where those two are. But um, Cal can get a bit left out now because those two are team trouble. So I thought I'd bring her in and see if she'd sit down with us for a bit. Although, that well said, they'll probably come and try and find her. Right, so whips, and I think pretty much these are all new things that you haven't seen before. So I am going to start off with my new uh, mitered square blanket, which is currently in a little basket. The basket that big one was in when I finished. Crazy. So this is my new one. And it is very little because I've, I started working on it on the 18th of July. It is now the 2nd of August. Um, sorry, Cal Cal, come here. What are you doing then? Yeah, and for this one, I've decided to alternate colours with a undyed yarn. And this one I'm actually making for my mum. Um, she has been dropping massive hints that she wants a blanket um pretty much since i started my first one so yeah i did say the next one would be for her and this is it so yeah i am not very far i think i've got 25 squares done i've just started a new one and i'm doing a few things a little bit different on this one i am only i'm making my squares smaller they are 19 stitches a side rather than 23 um, and instead of slipping the first stitch i am now slipping the last stitch on a row with the yarn in front and that makes the pickups a bit neater i don't know if you can really see this i also do use the weaving stephen method uh, which is a method um, popularized by Stephen West for weaving in my ends so there's no ends to weave in they just all get snipped off but yeah I don't know if you can see the difference if I hold up my other one you can see the back and the pickups on this it probably doesn't look that much different oh dear oh you're so far away but they are slightly slightly untidy I mean they're fine but I just wanted to try this new technique and I didn't want to try it on the old blanket in case it suddenly looked weird on the back. But yeah, 
the pickups are slightly tidier. And again, that is something that I will probably be doing a tutorial for. So at the moment I'm just using undyed for every other square. And then I'm trying to keep to a sort of more muted palette with this. I don't know how long that'll continue because obviously I'll be working on this for a long time. Um, and it may be that my need to add in the neons creeps in at some point but um, I'm going to try and keep it more muted. I've, I'm still using like dark colours, this is quite a dark purpley here but yeah just I'm, sl I'm avoiding the neons for as long as I can. May not be forever but I just think it will look nice if it's slightly more muted. There was a beep. Um, Okie doke. So yeah, that's my mitre square blanket. What's next? What's in here? This is a project bag by Siobhan's Craft. It is really soft and like velvety. It's lovely. This is a project that I had to ban myself from working on, otherwise I was going to finish it and knit on nothing else. It's one of the most addictive knits I have ever, ever picked up. And it may be because it's out of hand spun. If you watched the last episode, these are the um, hand spun yarns. I could not think of the word. Yeah, these are the hand spun yarns that I made with this shawl in mind. And this, um, well, shawl, cowl, it is the shifted. Is it the shifted or the shift? But it is a pattern by Andrea Maori and it is mosaic knitting and it makes a shawl that is joined together so it's kind of like a bandana type shawl so it will look like a shawl but it will go on over your head rather than being wrapped around. There will be a picture. So you, you make it like a normal shawl but um, then part of it's joined together. I'll go over the construction before, i tell you what, I won't sew it together until I've shown you what it looks like finished and blocked and then I'll sew it together because I have never seen it like that on a podcast. I think it's just too exciting to knit. Meow. Hello darling, have I just put all the yarn where you want to sit? Are you now tangled in it? Yes you are. Okay. So anyway, this is a mosaic pattern. So it is colour work using um, slip stitches. It is really easy. I have done um, mosaic knitting before. It is similar in sort of technique to doing slip stitches on a heel flap and gusset on a sock, or in a way it's similar to brioche. It has a similar rhythm to it because you're slipping and knitting, slipping and knitting, slipping. Um, and it is knit flat and because you uh, because I'm using hand spun it the pattern is made for the pattern was designed for sorry words are just yeah the pattern was designed for spin cycle yarn which is dyed in the wool so you get a very similar effect to hand spun so when I started spinning this is one of the the first things I wanted to knit because I knew how good it would look in hand spun um, and yeah, so pretty much there are two different sections and you're working them over and over, flipping what is your main yarn. Um, and yeah, the three I am using, I'd say, are these three. And I did spin it with this shawl in mind. In fact, I spun loads of different yarns until I could pick ones that I really wanted. And I can tell you for, for now, this isn't the only one of these I'll be knitting, I'll be knitting more. Um, it's an absolute joy to knit. Just look how pretty it is. Look at it. And obviously, because you're not 100% sure what combination is going to come out next, it's just you're watching yarns and colours play together and it's just so much fun. But yeah, now I've shown you, I can actually knit on it again. 
because I had to, I banned myself from knitting on it and cast on two jumpers because obviously I needed yeah <laughs> but yeah now I can actually knit on it again but I, I won't sew it up until I've shown you what it looks like when I've finished so I'll show you this next time because pretty much this is what I'm going to do all afternoon I'm just going to sit and knit on this and probably finish it because actually I think I'm I think I'm at least halfway on it so this is the edge this edge here is the edge that you've seen and it does have an eye cord all the way around the outside I think I'm knitting it on four millimeter needles um but yeah it does have an eye cord around the edges that are not going to be seamed together that you do as you're knitting it it's all really really simple and yeah I have also picked up the pattern for the shawl there is a shawl version of this and Andrea Mowry recently had her birthday sale so I, I must admit I picked up I think about four or five patterns from her in her birthday sale um, because I am also knitting another one of her jumper patterns which I didn't pick up in the sale but I'll show you it now because um, it's also knit in hand spun <laughs> fussy fussy very badly put in there yeah I'm gonna dart, delve into the spinning section slightly early this beautiful bump of fiber I got um one of these when I joined um, John Arben mill they are a traditional mill spinning um, fibre and worsted style yarns. They're amazing. Um, and I've been buying quite a bit of fibre from them to spin. I'm just gonna, yeah. Um, and I decided to join the mill as a mill member because you get you get a discount and it's a lifetime membership and I thought I'm buying loads of fibre because I'm spinning loads. Um, so yeah, I I decided to join, and you can when you join, you can join. If, say you're a knitter or a spinner. I chose spinner because I wanted fibre from them, and I got this bump of fibre, and I also got a mini skein that I don't have to show you, but it is lovely. Um, and as soon as I saw this fibre, I thought it is going to marl. I mean, it's called a marl. It's called a mill marl. And this is the dark version, and I wanted the dark version. They did have a light version as well this is what I got sent um, and as soon as I got sent this I ordered more because I thought this would make once it's spun up the perfect uh, weekender sweater which is a pattern by Andrea Mowry I will put it on the screen and um, now this pattern how it comes in two yarn weights it comes in a fingering weight and a worsted weight so I ordered another 200 grams so I had 400 grams of fibre and I spun it to a fingering weight which would give me enough for the fingering weight version or the uh, weekend light. However, this this is the fibre that I spun up. This is the yarn, sorry. Worry about that, you get a better idea of the colour. I spun this as fine as I could and um, when I applied it, it was probably not a fingering weight, more of a sport weight but when it had a bath it decided it wanted to be fluffy and this is definitely not a fingering weight it is I would say it's a DK more than anything there definitely are bits in it which are very fine but it is not fing it's not consistently fingering weight and I did knit a gauge swatch and I did try it and I did get the gauge for the weekend delight I could get the gauge for it but the fabric was very dense and that wasn't what I wanted I wanted it to be light and I wanted it to be drapey so I hang on sorry that was the postman um well the courier I was hoping he would be bringing Puka's food but he hasn't um don't know what's happening with Puka's food she has special food it's um arrives frozen and obviously if it doesn't come on the day it's supposed to it's useless because it's frozen um, and it hasn't arrived on the day it's supposed to 
and she kind of needs it. She's a very fussy eater and she doesn't eat um, normal cat food. Anyway, I'm out of breath, just run up and downstairs. Who bought me some fluff? If we have lots of time I might show you it because I think one of them is a custom blend that I got blended up for another Andrea Murray pattern because I'm obsessed with knitting and handspun. But yeah, what I did manage to do while I was downstairs was grab my swatch. So this top bit here is where I got gauge for the um, Weekend Delight. And that was on, I think, 3.5 millimeter needles. Um, and the middle one is on four millimeter needles and the bottom one is on five millimeter needles. And yeah, so in the end, I decided I liked the 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 sort of more open gauge of the five millimeter. I know this isn't the biggest swatch in the world, but I'm very lazy when it comes to swatches. And as long as I can count my stitches, that's as big a swatch as I need. Um, but yeah, I liked the feeling of the five millimeter. So I went and purchased the Weekender pattern, even though I'd already purchased the Weekender light pattern, and this was before the sale was on. And I started knitting that. But technically, I now didn't have enough yardage. So hence I ordered another bump of fibre and I need to spin this up. And this will probably give me way too much yardage because I think I'm only out by um, 200 metres, maybe. So I probably only need to spin about half of this, but I'll spin it all up and um, we shall see. But anyway, Jax, hi darling, well, can I put this blanket on so that you don't kill my legs? Come here. Come on. My baby boy. Cal doesn't really like him. She'll probably grumble. You gonna sit there? A good boy, aren't you? He is a good boy. He's a really a good little boy. I've never known a cat like him. I think I say that with every Bengal I've ever got. But honestly, this one, never known a cat like him. All he wants to do is eat and cuddle. And he's so in love with um, the other cats. Even though Cal doesn't really like him. He wants her to. Because he loves her. But you are good though. You don't bat him or anything like that. You just hiss. You're a good girl. Anyway. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So, Weekender. So I am knitting the original Weekender pattern, not the Weekender light. Um, and I am knitting it out of hand spun. Knitting in hand spun, honestly. So this is knit inside out and you start at the bottom and you cast on for a split hem. So you cast on half the amount of stitches, knit a rib, then cast on the other half of the stitches, knit another rib slightly shorter, join them together and knit them in the round. However, this is a reverse stockinette sweater. So you're actually knitting it inside out and it has a seam of slip stitches that runs down the middle. So you are knitting it even though it will be shown on the purl side when it's finished. Although I think quite a few people just keep it on the knit side. Um, and yeah, so this is the front and you can see that the hem is slightly longer on the back and this is my mild hand spun yarn and I, oh, I love it. I cannot tell you how much I love it. It feels really nice. Um, I mean, de you're definitely gonna wanna wear a t-shirt under it, but it still feels really nice. It smells amazing. Because obviously I've um, given it a bath after I've spun it. So you've got all those sheepy mill smells and then the, the sort of wool wash that I use that just, ugh. So as I'm knitting it, it's smelling amazing. It feels amazing. It's going to fall off my needles. It has fallen off my needles. And I'll bear with. But yeah, so I 
at the moment it is now just round and round knitting um, and you're just doing that slip stitch that didn't work Jax yeah you're just doing that slip stitch one at the front and one at the back so you slip it one round and then purl it for the next round and that's the only thing you have to think about but I have a stitch marker just before that stitch so that's when I pause and look to see whether I am slipping or purling and that's so I have to think twice around you you really want that bird don't you are you a bird? boo who kisses so yeah that's the only time I have to think I think the version of this that um, is in the pattern is slightly cropped I think it just hits a natural waist um, I will probably knit it longer than that because I like my jumpers a bit longer um, so I think I'm knitting the third size I was planning on knitting the fourth size but when I cast on my hem I was just slightly short on yarn so I was just like well I've got enough stitches for the third size we'll knit the third size probably not the best way of judging what size of knits you're going to make but it's it's the judgment call I made it is meant to have some ease um this looks like it's going to be plenty big enough um I was wearing my flax jumper yesterday which actually has the least amount of ease of all the things I've knit and I really like that jumper so if this has less ease than planned I'm not gonna be mad about it I'm I'm really really enjoying it what I will do is I will turn it the way out it is gonna live and you can see that row of slip stitches so this is what the front will look like so you get that row of slip stitches up the middle yeah. so this is tally knitting at the moment uh, it's taken over from my Musselboro hat which I haven't worked on since I cast on this um, yeah again it's just another one of those ones that I can't really put down I just want to keep knitting um, I ended up with three skeins of yarn and there's about 200 plus meters per skein and my first one ran out I don't, it's because it's the inside out I, I have found the only difficult thing with this is remembering to um, put the ends of your yarn when you're changing a ball on the outside because it feels counterintuitive because you normally put them to the back of your work so I'm fighting with little paws here alright darling where's Pooka anyway? people will want to see Pooka I mean, I'm sure everybody loves you, Jax, but they're really just here for Puka. I'll grab her. Uh, yeah, so my first ball of yarn ended there. So I think I'll at least get to um, where I separate for the sleeves and start working front and back out of this next ball of yarn. And I might. I don't know I definitely don't have enough yarn but I kind of don't want to spin the, the fluff until I know how little how much it's pointless I'm gonna have to spin it all it's it's one of those weird things it's like I really enjoyed spinning it but I just kind of want to see how far I can go before I actually sort of spin what I need makes no sense but yeah so yeah, my first ever hand spun sweater and I haven't even been spinning six months yet. I'll have been spinning six months in September. September the 13th I will have been spinning for six months. And I have spun every single day since I started spinning. So again, it's another part of my morning routine. Once I've done my mitered square and had my cup of tea, had my toast, I then spin for a little bit if I'm not doing anything else. Okey doke. So I guess I'll show you the other sweater that I cast on. That is, this is the project bag that it is in. I think this was from the Woolly Thistle. I'll put the details in the description box. 
Um, but yeah, we will. It doesn't fit in that bag anymore because it's huge. This is another one where I'm just going to lose it off the needles, isn't it? So, not it's not something that I shared on the podcast, but I did actually make a make nine list for this year, and at some point, um, throughout the year, I'm going to do a how I'm doing on it, um, sort of blog blog post maybe thing, um, but it kind of seems slightly pointless as I didn't tell you about it at the beginning of the year, but I did put it on Instagram. You can see my make nine on there, and. I didn't put individual patterns on, so to speak. I put like knitting challenges in the way. So I put the Rainbow Sock Chronicles on because I knew I was going to be doing that. I put the Stephen West MCAL shawl on because I do that every year. The other thing that I did was um, oh, the Colourworks Matter, which I've finished. Um, I put on knitting 10 patterns from my Ravelry library because I have so many patterns in my library and I'm not knitting them, I'm just seeing more and wanting to cast those on. So I wanted to go back and knit some of those ones that I've wanted to for a while. Um, and mainly I'm actually doing that with in conjunction with the Rainbow Sock Chronicles. I'm knitting all those sock patterns. But the one pattern, the one actual pattern that I put on uh, was this, which is the For, for Fox Sake sweater uh, by um, Max. Max Kerr is it? Uh, all the details will be on the screen. Now I have wanted to knit this sweater ever since I have seen it and um, this was the main reason I started looking at that um, ladder back jacquard colour work technique because I knew there were long floats in this. So I wanted to get that technique down before I cast this on because I wanted my colour work to be as nice as possible for this. And I have used that ladder back jacquard technique in this and I will show you that in a minute. Um, the one thing that didn't twig with this jumper because I was like, I've got that technique down. I am fine. I am going to do this where it is going to be fine. It's going to be great. I did not notice. This is three colour colour work and I have never done that before. And I have certainly never done it with Ladabat Jacquard technique. The Ladabat Jacquard technique is easy. It just requires that extra little moment of thought because you have that position where you have that stitch on the other side. But you don't then have to worry about carrying any other floats because you're just dealing with it at that stitch. But I don't exactly know how that worked with three colours. I knew how it worked with two. But I didn't even know how to hold yarn with three colours. Um, when I work colour work, I I am an English, old English style knitter. So I hold my yarn in my right hand. And um, when I do colour work, I hold the two yarns over two different fingers. So I am throwing with different fingers, doo -doo 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 -doo, but I am still using my right hand. And I could not figure out how to do that with a third yarn. I could have done it putting the third colour in my left hand and picking that up in a continental style, but then I couldn't make that work with the Ladabat Jacquard technique because then you are swapping yarns. It all got very confusing. Needless to say, this yoke took forever. It took forever. I think the rows got, took about 40 minutes each and there's about 50 rows. So you do the math there, it took forever. And I have to admit that I swore at the designer of this colour work chart more than once. I swore big bad swear words at him in my head and out loud because there are rows where you are doing three colour colour work for one stitch of the third colour. That's all I'm going to say. You can duplicate that third, that stitch if you really want it or a little bit of planning in the actual chart and design and you wouldn't have rows like that. That's all I'm saying. I'll shut up about that because it's not my design 
and loads of people have knit it and I'm sure they all swore but it I mean come on it for the actual sort of design it is worth it I'm pulling it out a bit because the um color work technique I use does stretch it sort of make it concertina inside it hasn't been blocked it's not even nearly finished to be honest I'm amazed it's as far as it is but yeah so right first off I will show you what this looks like I've waffled on about it so much on the inside I don't want to lose my stitches I really do not want to lose stitches on this right this is what this yoke looks like on the inside so all I did was instead of working that back stitch with one yarn I just used two and again I did it every five stitches for the whole yoke and yeah so it's not really a technique I can talk about massively because I, I was kind of just winging it um, I'm quite confident doing it with two colours but for three I really was just winging it um, I think it looks okay however this fabric here I don't know if I can really show it is so dense because it is basically six layers of yarn and this is the fabric of the body which is one layer of yarn so I mean this is going to be bulletproof it, it really is now this is a sweater I am losing stitches aren't I? yes you are um, this is a sweater design but I want to make it into a cardigan because I'm more likely to wear a cardigan. I am knitting this for me. See, I'm more likely to wear this as a cardigan because it is going to be quite a big size um, and it is going to be quite bulky. So I decided to put in a steep panel down the front. You can see there. So this is only my second time doing steaks they went okay with the vintage sweater uh, I wouldn't say they are my favourite thing ever but um, yeah I'm not scared of the actual cutting of my knitting that doesn't scare me um, it is more just like getting positioning right and stuff like this this pattern is pretty good for that because uh, there is a section in it like when I think it's when you finished when you're setting up for the yoke where um, he does sort of say you should have this many stitches for the arms this many stitches for the back this many stitches for the front so at that point you can just halve the stitches for the front and put your steep panel in there and obviously you can decide where you're putting that front in relation to to make this even and it, it has worked out pretty even I think so we have like the, the four little foxes on the front so yeah I'm pretty happy with that and when it comes to doing the body obviously there's no colour work in the steep panel so I put um, a row of pearl stitches down there so just to keep it on track so I know where it is and yet yeah, now it's just at the stage of um, all the stocking work, stockingette stitch for the body and um, then the arms and then they will be finishing so this is the pattern for this is just a sweater but because of the density of this yoke I am thinking this is going to be more a sort of coat type garment for me so I am wondering whether once I've cut it open whether it might work really nicely with the zip and then I might think about maybe adding a hood and pockets and making it more like a, a coat digan a coat coat cardigan type of thing but yeah either way I, I'm just I'm so pleased that I finally cast this on and it's yeah it, it's, it's an actual thing rather than a, a thing I'm going to knit in my head so the yarns that I used for this the main colours are drops and they are drops lima um, it's a dark grey and like a petrol blue and a cream and then I did use two hand dyes just because the 
orange and the yellow that was in the drops was not the colour that I wanted. It didn't look right. But I had a ball of um, the Tabby Cat colour by Stranded Dye Works in DK. I'd got this on DK because I was going to make a um, beeswax hat out of it. That's blowing out slightly because it's hitting the sun. It's probably better about there. Um, and I had this balled up ready to knit and it had been balled up for over a year because it's one of those I wanted to make a special hat out of it because Stranded Yarn, special, it's tabby cat colour, it's pretty much the same colour as Cal who's now sat behind the camera. I wonder if I could just make Jax sit there because he's gone all sleepy. Um, so I thought I'd just give it a go, he's going to want to come back onto me. Literally the cuddliest little kitten you've ever met. What are you doing then? You're going to rub your nose. Are you going to lick my nose? Or are you just having a sniff of it? Can you go on the sofa? No. Okay. Yeah, so I used Stranded for the, the fox colour. And then I had a... Um, Another hand dyed DK that I dyed in a grey, and this actually only calls for three colours. Um, yeah, yeah, he's going there. Yeah, it only calls for three or four colours, I think four colours. Yeah, you've got the main body colour and then three colours for the colour work. But instead of using that main body colour in the colour work, I used that hand dyed grey. And I think what it does quite nicely, so I'm just going to leave the jacks in the box there, um, is it gives it kind of a look like you've used hand dyed because you've got that sort of variation in the colour but not the cost of doing the whole sweater in hand dyed yarn because that would be big 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 cost but yeah you'll be seeing this again I'm sure you'll be seeing this quite a few times before it fin it's finished but yeah it's just a case of now picking up and knitting on it every now and then and getting the actual stocking out done because that's all there is stocking out the body and sleeves and then I'll decide as to whether it's going to have a button band or a zip or hood and a pocket or whatnot. I could be knitting on this forever. Well it's definitely not going to go back in the bag but it wasn't really fitting in there anyway so I'll put it in the basket. I mean come on. But yeah so at the moment it's very easy knitting. But, oh my god, that yoke was not easy knitting. If it is something you want to knit, I would have a serious think about it. And maybe try something that is three colour colour work before you attempt that. Because... I'm, I'm, I did nearly frog it, sort of halfway through. Because it was taking so long. But it hasn't, it hasn't put me off. It definitely put me off three colour colour work for a while. But it hasn't put me off colour work. So my last whip, I'm now trapped on the back. You gonna come out? Okay. Yeah, my last whip that I'm gonna show you today, knitting wise, there's a bit of spinning. Um is another colour work mitt, also by Erica Luda. Um, and these are the Vary mitts. And um when I was knitting the springbound mitt. Um, I was looking at all her patterns because pretty much I just wanted it all of them and um, I saw that she'd released one which has an owl on this isn't the full I will put the, the, the card up so you can see what the full pattern looks like um, and I have an auntie, my auntie Judy who loves owls and um, yeah she, she's been going through a bit of a tough time so I thought she probably wanted something nice so I decided to cast on these for her um, and I'm going to try and knit these as quickly as possible because I think she'll probably want them fairly sharpish. But again, I am using that Ladderback Jacquard technique on the um, owl side, not on the other side. Uh, 
And the yarns I am using are some Sheepies Metropolis. I really like this as a um, colour work yarn. I used it on my Novelli, um, not this colour, but this yarn. Um, and it's kind of heathered, so you get a really nice effect. Um, I am using some, what's this called? Cascade Heritage in a very sort of duck egg blue blue that was for the little bit down at the bottom and then I decided to go for the brown that I dyed mainly because I thought um, what else am I going to use it for so this is some hand dyed yarn I dyed in a sort of tonal brown colourway for the main colour so yeah I think I'm using 2.5 millimetre needles maybe 2.25 and it's, so far it's just completely knit to pattern apart from using that colour work technique on the back I really like these because they're slightly longer than the spring bound mitts and the only thing I'm not too keen about with spring bound mitts is I would like them to come up further on the fingers so when I actually make a pair for me I'm gonna sort of doctor these patterns and make it how I want but yeah you, the owl is starting to emerge there really pretty and then the back is a sort of very simple feather design very geometric on the back and you've got this um, cuff part which is sort of more I don't know it reminds me of the, the borders we used to get with the uh, wallpaper you know we used to have like something on the bottom and a border Showing my age. Um, so yeah, so I've nearly finished the first bit um, and I do want to get cracking with these so this is another thing that I want to cast on. So the other things that I have on the needle that I'm not going to share to you, I have cast on August's uh, Rainbow Sock Chronicles um, they, this time I'm using yarn by Ducky Darling. Yarn that you haven't seen before but, so, but you'll see that next time. Um, I haven't found Puka, but I have found um, the Puka Summoner, which is this little tiny bit of plastic that she's completely addicted to. Um, so she probably will appear. Is this noise very really irritating? I mean, come on, it's just so gorgeous. Um, yeah, this is the fluff that's arrived. Little bags of fluff. Um, I was actually expecting these to be uh, blended rather than just together in a bag so I ordered I think 400 grams of what I assumed would be a blend but it is just they've put 25 grams of each fluff in a bag together so I'm gonna have to blend this but this um, ideally will be spun up and then make a really nice heathered colour for the wool and honey jumper by Andrea Mari. So yeah, mildly disappointed with these. I was expecting it to come as a blended fibre because that it was a custom blend, not a you know I I could buy four different fibres and put them together myself. Hey ho! Anyway, um, but no, no, I can't find Puka. So um, I think that's everything. Um, I, I have no idea how long this was. I feel like I rattled through it fairly quickly. Um, I don't think there's much to, to, to waffle on about to tell you about. I don't know what's going on with crochet work at the minute. Um, yeah, no idea. Um, it's all on pause. So I don't have any crochet work as far as I know until they tell me. But at any point they could tell me it's all going ahead. So I've kind of been just not 100% knowing what to do, whether to crack on with what I want to be doing my own work or um, to wait. Mainly I've been waiting. Um, but this month I feel like I have to crack on and do some work of my own, otherwise there won't be any pennies coming in. Um, so, so that's what I'm going to do. I've got two patterns I think I'm going to be releasing this month. Uh, but I'll talk to you about that more on the next episode because Hopefully there will actually be some crochet content on the next episode. Did anyone spy a cow?
Where did she go? Ah! Sneaky! Sneaky! That's alright, you can go there. So yeah, uh, if you've stuck around to the end, thank you very much. Um, and I will see you soon. Um, take care. Goodbye my friends. Bye.